That is awesome, dude. Look how red he is. That's real animal style right there. <laughs> Look at that. That is a day maker, baby. Huh? Look at that. Today I'm fishing in Stream Song, Florida. I'm at the Stream Song Resort. My good friend Tyler Ramsdale is taking me fishing. This is about uh, an hour, hour and 10 minutes from my house, uh, kind of out here in, in central, truly in central Florida, kind of the middle of the state. My main man again, Tyler Ramsdale, gonna show us a day of bass fishing. What do you think? I mean, water temps are good. It's a great time of the year. Uh, it's post-spawn. Water's about 72 degrees right now, so we're gonna try to, the fish are gonna come off the beds. They're gonna be kind of on the drop-offs and the lily pads, and uh, water temp's perfect, so we should uh, be in for a good bite today. Another beautiful day. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. You know, today we were really, I think, Pretty fortunate because the bite has been really good on the main lake. Uh, they actually call this the glory hole because for many many years before the resort went up it was one of the most productive lakes on the property. On one. He's on one. There you go. First cast. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, you know, with all the visitors, uh, a lot of people come here and get the opportunity to fish. And, and it, it's had good days and slower days for us. But, you know, I could kind of tell right away this morning, you know, my first cast, you know, fish on the end of the line, I kind of thought today the glory hole was going to treat us pretty good. Pretty little guy. Looking for his grandmother, though. Yeah, he's looking for, we're looking for his big brother. Great big grandmother. Sitter. got to be really cool for you to have this as a job and that way you get to kind of based on water temp and time of the year follow those fish from deep water to shallow water to the beds you know it's just like guiding following them yeah the absolutely season, we you know, map it out saltwater. seven years i've tracked them when they bed what time of year water temp all that so it's kind of just like getting into a, a pattern fish, game, yeah, fish log yeah exactly yeah. It helps for bass too, and then we're starting to see some bigger fish, same month, same time of year when we're catching them, seeing some patterns now, so that's huge to know. Um, when someone's looking for a bigger bass, we can kind of put them on the right week, and uh, if they're coming out just for fishing. You know, Tyler and I have been fishing together for many years now, so this is probably my eighth or ninth trip out here to Stream Song, and you know, every morning when I get up, and, and this is the day's adventure, I'm just as excited as the first time because there's so many options here. There's so many great lakes on this property. You know, the three main lakes that are attached to the resort, all of them are spectacular. We've had great, just absolutely epic days on every one of those lakes. There's some other private lakes around the property that, that we've been in that are obviously spectacular as well. So you never really know what Tyler's got in store for us, but because he's out here guiding every day, He's pretty dialed in and he kind of knows where he wants to set us up based on how the bite's been leading up to our day. Oh, there's one. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Ooh, <dude. laughs> nice fish too. Yeah. Good boy. Oh, headache. Get him in the boat. Ooh, that's a good bass. Yes. Nice fish. Tyler has spent some time with Kevin Van Dam. Uh, he spent part of a summer fishing on Van Dam's boat um, as an observer and as an amateur. And, uh, you know, I think that's invaluable time. Uh, that and then obviously being out here and being able to do it as much as he's been able to do it, it's made him a really good fisherman. Mike's on the tree. I have the bass. It happens. It happens, right? It happens. Nice fish. Thank you, man. Yeah, so we never fish this channel. We usually just go through it, but moving water, um, the water's a little stagnant back there, and we were thinking moving water, they're kind of school up there, and that's the second bite I had. That's a nice three, three and a half pounder right there. 
him and I are together on the boat and just kind of talking through the day and kind of what he's seeing, what are the fish doing today versus what they did yesterday or a week ago, he's become really good at evaluating those situations and how we need to change to kind of meet what those fish are doing on that given day. Same thing works for me on the salt water. You know, one day the fish are doing one thing and 24 hours later they could be doing something totally different. So it's all about paying attention to those details and knowing and understanding what the fish are gonna do from day to day so that you can catch them day after day as well. You know, I think one of the things that makes this such a unique resort destination is where it is. I mean, you are in the middle of nowhere. Cow pastures and fields and lakes kind of scatter the, the landscaping here. I mean, it's all you see on your drive to this destination. And then in the middle of nowhere rises this beautiful world-class resort. And it's really something to see. The first time you pull up to it, it, it really kind of takes your breath away. It's just a very neat architectural building. On him? Yep, I got him. Feels like a really good fish. Yeah, I think that was one that missed mine. Yeah. Well, it's not as big as I thought, but he's... They're fighting hard he's out there. Really, yeah. He's really giving me some... That you, when they hit, too. He's giving me some grief. Yeah, that's all right. It's still like, a wow. nicer one. Yeah, it's a nice fish for sure. Fat. Yeah, nice fat piggy. Nice fat piggy. Nice one. Hit it like a torpedo. He did, dude. He loved it. Your rod. It's the really fun part about these crankbaits is when they, you know, it's like throwing plugs over rock piles with guy grouper. They hit it so hard. They're so angry with whatever they think it is that they just pummel it. You get to be here every day? See every how spoiled you are? Yeah, I can't fish anywhere else, man, for bass, so <laughs> what's, the, what's the point, you know? And uh, it's probably some of the best lakes in the entire world. There's no doubt about it. And it's catch and release, so then, you know, they're not pressured. We're throwing them back. We're, you know, we, we want to see future generations come out. You know, this is probably one of the prettiest lakes, in my opinion, on the property, you know, with the resort kind of overlooking the whole thing. They've got the floating green out there in the water. Um, just, it's, it's just really neat. It's got a lot of coves in it, a lot of turns and a lot of points, a lot of really nice structure. Uh, it's pretty deep, 25, 30 foot deep in some spots, and it makes for a really, really great opportunity, especially, you know, either pre-spawn, on the spawn, because there's a lot of bedding areas, or post-spawn, like we are now. Because of the deepness of the lake, the drop-offs, the edges, it just creates a lot of opportunity. You just, just like any fishing opportunity, you have to figure out where those fish are on that given day, and once you do that, these lakes are so full of fish, you know, it's all catch and release here, so, all the fish that are caught, even with the guests that come throughout the year, it's all catch and release. They all get put back into the fishery, and you can really tell that because the fishing just stays really, really good. Mouth it. Huh? He mouthed that thing.
Today we got a little bit later start. Uh, we didn't meet here till about 8 o'clock. It wasn't real, real late. Sun didn't get up good till about 7.30 here. But, you know, normally, if we can hit the pond early, the topwater bite is normally pretty good, you know, January, February, March. Today we just didn't have a whole lot of that topwater bite. We just couldn't get a whole lot of action going on it. Uh, yesterday, you know, all the guys that were on the, on the lake said it was all crankbaits. Crankbait was the deal. Crankbait, crankbait, crankbait. We caught a couple of fish on crankbaits, but today it was kind of different in another way. Today it was much more a cutter worm bite. You know, everything was slow on the bottom, picking it up, getting it away from the lily pads a little bit, working on those edges, getting into that probably five to 10 foot of water range seemed to be where most of the fish were staying. We caught a couple of fish here and a couple of fish there up in the pads. But for the majority of the day, we were really having our best luck off of the pads a little bit on the drop off. So again, you know, paying attention to the details throughout your day will help you catch these fish. And then one of the things, and I can't emphasize this enough, is you gotta be patient, especially if you're fishing a worm. You know, let that thing rise and fall. Give it some time on the bottom before you pick it up right away. I really, really struggle with it coming from shallow water, saltwater fishing that I do where you're you know fishing in two foot of water and your strike zone's only this, you know, you don't have to wait long for your fall because you know you're not in a whole lot of water for that bait to get down into the strike zone. Here in 10 foot of water that bait's gotta get way down there before you're ever any, anywhere near your fish. So it really for me it really is a, a, a practice of just slowing down and breathing, and taking in the day, kind of enjoying the environment slowing my roll a little bit. That's how I end up having the best luck out here while we're doing this pass thing. You got one? Yeah. Is good. He ran out too. Oh, another good fish. Good fish. Oh yeah, baby. Nice. Got a worm. <laughs> this is a good one, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, that nice, is a good one. Nice fish. I don't know that bad at all. Come here, pumpkin. Come see me, baby. Oh, yeah. Heavy, too. Big one of the day. It's a heavy fish. Got that big old belly still. How you like that? Real animal stream song, baby. Come see Tyler. He'll hook you up. Booyah! God, I enjoy this so much. So ridiculous. Such a cool thing. So relaxing out here. Gators and birds. And... Unbelievable. Such a beautiful place, man. 554 lakes in Polk County, Florida. 554 of them. And we get to fish them whenever we want. Hey gang, this week's tip of the week, I wanna to talk to you about my good friends at Cleanse Oil. You know, since 1948, Cleanse Oil has been the cleaner, lubricator, and protectant for the outdoorsman. They started in the gun industry with a great product there. I used it for many, many years on my guns. Now they've got a great new product out. It's called Cleanse Oil Marine and Tackle. And I use this stuff everywhere, all over my boat. I've got spray bottles of it stuffed in my truck. I've got it in my boat. I've got it in my garage. I've got some in the kitchen. I've got some in my office. There's just nowhere that this stuff doesn't come in handy. It cleans, lubricates, and protects like no product I've ever used. They've got a bunch of different bottles. They've even got some wipes, aerosol cans. It's just really, really a great, great product. It's a veteran owned and operated company that's been just fantastic to work with. I couldn't be happier with the product. Again, I've been using it for years on my guns. Now they have their marine and tackle. I put it on my reels. I put it on my trailer. I put it on everything. Check out cleanseoil.com today for this great product. It's at a whole bunch of dealers all over the place. If you can't find it, you need to ask for it. Check out cleanseoil cleaner, lubricant, and protect it, you won't be disappointed.
Streamsong Resort is an amazingly quiet place far from the concrete, crowds, and chaos often associated with other Central Florida resorts. Here, you will experience a modern lakeside lodge offering spacious, amenity-rich accommodations, outstanding guided bass fishing on multiple lakes surrounding the resort, three nationally ranked golf courses, outstanding dining, a spa, and an array of exhilarating outdoor adventures found nowhere else in Florida. Come see for yourself why Stream Song Resort is an easy choice as a real animal's preferred destination. So what's with the hook set today, buddy? It looks a little violent. It's a little harder than usual. I mean, that's pretty much your standard bass hook set, but on a slower bite, I just want to make sure that I, they're getting it, you know? Once it's in their mouth and I know, I, I don't want them to get away, especially <laughs> down a couple of fish, you know? So it definitely intensifies I that. I thought that might have something to do Oh, for, it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I shouldn't have said that I was down a little bit, but I'm catching up. I'm only down four, I think, maybe five. It's about to be three right here. This cast, calling it. Oh, there's one. Oh, good fish, that was cool. He ran with wow, it. Wow, dude. That was a really cool hook set, buddy. Woo! <laughs> cool. That hook got in there, he was not happy. Kind of outside the... Yep, same, same. Scenario, yep. Right? That's really the key is the whole deal, is just trying to put that pattern together. See where those fish are sitting. Yeah, took them a little bit. There's a little belly there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a nice little chunk. Rage tail cutter worm. Strike king, baby. Saltwater fish will suck that bait in. So if you start reeling right away, that circle hook will get him in because it's in his mouth. These bass will just kind of slowly swim off with it. But a lot of times, if, you don't, if they don't set the hook good, a bass will suck it in, realize it's not what they want, and spit it right back out. So that's why I believe you see those bass guys set that mean, just really mean hook set like Tyler was using on them today. You know, you don't want that fish to get away, especially you know, in the bass world where a lot of guys are fishing for money. You know, they need that weight to uh, pick up a check at the end of a long weekend. They spend time away from their family and every fish in the boat's an extra couple of bucks. So, you know, that's why I think you see that violent hook set in the bass fishing world. What we're really using today is, is basically two baits have been working all day. We've been using rage tail cutter worms. I had a green on earlier. Here I've gone to a more purple with the green flake in it. Um, weedless weighted bass hook. I got a quarter ounce of lead on the bullet sinker here. Um, we've also had some good luck on the, on the uh, square bill crankbaits by Strike King. Great bait. Uh, the 2.5 is what we've been using, kind of runs down maybe from three to five feet. Um, using 30 pound braided line. This is a bull bay, one of the bull bay new bass rods. This is a seven foot. This one's a medium with a fast action tip. It's not a real heavy rod, but I don't like to throw a real heavy rod when I'm bass fishing. I just kind of roll with what I got. And if I get beat up in the weeds, you get beat up in the weeds. I do have a piece of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader on here just to give me some camo from that 30 pound braid, but that's really what we're using today. That cutter worm, you know, almost every time I go bass fishing, I end up throwing this cutter worm at some point. Uh, it's from the Rage Tail side of the Strike King lures, and you know, Strike King has been one of the best bass lure manufacturers in the country for years. So all of their stuff, their spinner baits, their frogs, the KVD Sexy Frog is a great bait. Didn't have much luck with that this morning, but everything else here, cutter worms, different colors all working good along with those crankbaits in different colors been on fire all morning you got one yep, yep. yeah nice oh, get out of there oh he's in me he's got me in there too oh my god nice that was a cool fish yeah across the pads like that that was a cool <laughs> fish not a big fish but a cool fish something coming right across some pads. This bass thing, you know, ever since I started coming out here, it, it really, uh, I need this a couple times a year because it just relaxes me. You know, I'm, I'm not very good with a bait caster, but it, it, I try to spend the whole day with it and I have so much fun with it because 
it's a constant grind to try to get better with this tool. I have to do it once every episode, just <laughs> Mike Iconelli. You know, obviously throwing spinning rods every day, I feel pretty comfortable with that, but with the, you know, throwing a casting rod and reel, it's just totally different from my normal, from my normal game. So it adds an extra layer to it. And then I, I don't know if it's the fresh water, I don't know if it's the wildlife, I don't know if it's the beauty of this place or what it is, but it, it really lines me up. It gets me in a good place going into the spring, going into my tarpon season and all the things that I have to do on the salt water. This really dials me into a happy place. Nice one. Nice one. Nice one, Captain. I knew we'd get the boat in the water, but I, I wasn't sure we were going to get it out. I was constantly asking Tyler if he had a farmer close by with a big tractor to, to pull us up the hill if we need be. But um, we've always managed to get it out. It's always come out, but uh, never, never a dull moment out here at Streamsong Resort. Mm -hmm.